Hello, I'm E.W. Dempsey, Adult Ministries Director for Georgia Cumberland Conference. Adult ministry includes health ministries, personal ministries, prison ministries, pioneer outreach, uh, also our Bible correspondence program called Bible Research, and three-point play ministry. So I welcome you today as either a leader, assistant leader, or maybe a committee member uh, of one of these um, departments. So we are glad that you're able to tune into this and, and we, we're here to help you uh, in, in any of these areas. And we're going to be giving you some practical suggestions uh, that can help you in your leadership there in, the, in your church. Uh, also, we will be um, showing you a lot of things that are available that, that are of a practical nature that you can use. And uh, so we, you know, you may want to take notes on this or, or whatever, but uh, it is designed to, to help you. And uh, if you're watching it individually, you might want to later uh, maybe bring your committee uh, people together and, and watch it with you. But either way, that we're here to help you. And um, so let's start, with a, let's start with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for each person that has volunteered to be a leader in these important areas. So Lord, I ask that you would bless them as we, as we look at this, bless us as we present it that it will be in a way that it can be effective both to their church and to the community. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be covering uh, health ministries and personal ministries. And um, used to, I did this separately, and, and, but then I realized that we, we've got to work together with these two departments. It's, it's, it's essential. And uh, so thus, you kind of see as we go along, some of the things we present will be um, practical for either department. Some will be separated. Uh, in uh, health ministries, we are, um, I've often called it the right arm of the message. And we recognize that everywhere Jesus went, uh, he met people's felt needs. And uh, so certainly, if it's the right arm, it is the key to reaching pe people and building relationships. Now, ultimately, obviously, we are here to tell people about Jesus and to present the gospel. In personal ministries, that is directly related to the spiritual aspect. But I hope you can see here today that, that how we can meet people through health programs and, uh, and then reach them with the, with the gospel. So I think you can see then why we need to work together. I want to start with a statement from Acts of the Apostles, the very first sentences uh, that, you, that, that reminds us of why we're doing what we're doing. And it says, The church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service, and its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. So you can see then that, um, that this is the ultimate goal. Now on the, on the uh, uh, general conference level in health, uh, we have Dr. Landis, um, we have actually Katja Reinert that I worked with for many years. Uh, and, and they serve the world field uh, as far as health is concerned. Major projects, maybe like one dealing with AIDS or starvation in some of the different countries. On the North American division level, we have a new leader, Angie David, Dr. Angie David. And uh, I serve on their health committee, how for a number of years. Uh, we have another one or two people from our conference. Dr. Meyer is one that serves on there also. On the union level, we have uh, Lionel LaMountain. And uh, then on the conference level, of course, that is me. So, uh, uh, and then we hope on the conference, I mean, on the church level, uh, that there is a local health leader. Now, in personal ministries, uh, we have on the uh, division level, uh, in the North American division, Dr. Johnson, Alfred, J. Alfred Johnson, and uh, he also serves as the prison ministry's leader, and I serve on both of those committees. And we also have people from this conference and this union 
uh, that serve on those committees as well. Um, the union level, uh, personal ministries and prison ministry leader is David Long. And, uh, and again, we serve here in the conference on those, on those departments. I suggest uh, all, right off that we uh, possibly, as I said, take notes, or if not, just review through this enough that you can, to, because there's a lot of information, you're not gonna remember everything. Um, I do wanna suggest uh, right off that we have some uh, magazines that are called Quick Start Guides. They're designed for your department, if you're a health leader, personal ministers leader, or prison ministers leader. Um, and this is something that you can get from the ABC. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to suggest is that you have a committee. Uh, that way you're not in this by yourself. Now some of you are gonna be very experienced. Uh, you have been doing this for a long time and, and uh, you've experienced both the failures and success, uh, but maybe you're a new person. And so this information is really to help those maybe that are just starting. The other situation is that we go, many of our leaders are started from, are, are uh, elected from January to December. Others are from July uh, through June. So, um, you know, this is something you just have to, to, that's why we're doing this video is to help you regardless of when you're starting. The committee, though, that you choose will probably vary in size depending on the size of your church. Um, it may be just two or three people. It may be four or five people. There are certain people that need to be on either committee. Uh, for instance, on the health committee, um, obviously the personal ministries leader needs to be on that committee. Uh, sometimes you include the pastor as an unvoting member on these committees. Um, maybe the head elder, maybe a deacon, deaconess and then some laymen at large. If you've got a community services program, that leader should also be on there. Uh, it needs to be balanced, whichever committee it is. Uh, and if it's a personal ministries committee, the health leader needs to be on that committee. Uh, and the, again, pastor, head elder, deacon, deaconess, and I'll kind of show you why a little bit later, of why some of these people need to be on there. Um, again, community services leader, but again, some people at large. It needs to be balanced between males and females. Uh, and, and as far as uh, laymen are concerned, uh, there's uh, there people that really want and have an interest in these areas, okay? Um, now, there's certain things I want to mention that we can help you and your committee from the conference office. My secretary and assistant is Becky Campbell. Our phone number at the conference is 800-567-1844. Becky's extension is 348 and mine is 349. My cell phone is 423-667-5420. And you can feel free to call at any point. Uh, I will tell you, I normally turn it off when I go to sleep at night, but uh, you can leave messages or whatever. Uh, but we're here to help you. One of the things that we do, um, obviously, are training events. Uh, we have just finished uh, three. We have one more coming up, and uh, these are designed uh, regionally. And, but yet, you may not be able to come to these, and that's why we're doing this video. Uh, it is, again, the training event is for health and personal ministries leaders. Prison ministries is done separately. Uh, either we at the conference or the union does training events. Uh, and then every other year we do a um, appreciation dinner for people involved in prison ministries. I mention that today because in most of our churches, we may not have a prison ministries director, but it would come under personal ministries. Another way that, uh, that is certainly helpful, and this is key, and I hope that you write this down or take note of it, on the division level, the festival of laity is now the key means by which all communication is going to occur in personal ministries, prison ministries, and even in health ministries. So it's festivalofthelaity.com. Make sure you remember that. And uh, again, uh, it's just, just starting, but uh, there are already a lot of things on that that will help you, and of course that will grow. Also, twice a year, we have um, 
um, a, this is for health ministries. We have a newsletter called Exciting Health Happenings. And what we do is ask each one of you to send and tell us what you are doing. Why do we do that? Because you may be doing something that nobody's ever even thought of, and it gives them ideas, okay? And uh, we do this in the spring, and we do it in the fall. So we ask you to send your information in, and then it is duplicated and sent back uh, uh, to, to, to each one of you in the form, as I said, of a newsletter. Uh, there is one also from the a general conference that comes out two to three, uh, about every two to three months. I'm not sure that they're going to continue that. So my, our, my main focus with you is the one we, that we put out there, okay? Um, there are occasionally training events also by the union. And when they conduct these, we will let you know, whether it be health or personal ministries. Also, every three years, the North American Division sponsors a health summit. Uh, for years and years, it was every year in Florida. Now they rotate it on coast and different places in the United States. Again, we will let you know ahead of time when these are, are scheduled. There are certain things that we stress in this conference. And since we have well over 200 church groups, counting churches, um, companies, and mission groups, uh, it's impossible for me to get into every church. Uh, we generally let you know when we're doing what is called a rally. The health rally is separate from a personal ministries rally. These are designed to be held in a local church. Normally, I have the sermon, which is of a spiritual nature, and then it goes for three hours in the afternoon. And uh, we, as I said, generally invite churches that are in the, in the area because knowing we're not going to be able to come back into that same area probably for a while. Why do we do this? Well, the challenge in health ministries is to challenge every single person in our churches, uh, not just as outreach, but to make a difference in our own lives. And so there are certain things we stress. And I'm asking you as health leaders, uh, however you want to do it, uh, to, to, to plan these same things. And let me say this. We do a lot of programs. We do uh, take blood pressures. We do uh, screenings and all kinds of things. Make sure you note this, that the rule in this conference and the North American Division is that there is supposed to be a health professional involved in the interpretation and usually even in doing the testing. Let's use high blood pressure, I mean blood pressure test for example. Uh, many people can do blood pressures and so a lay person can do that but the interpretation is important. Let's say that you uh, did a blood pressure test on somebody and, you t and they said their score was uh, t 100 over 200 or 200 over 100 and you say oh that's a great score. Well, obviously, that's not a good score. And, um, and so you're giving false information. Uh, we were in South Georgia doing a health screening, and we had an individual come through that, um, whose cholesterol level was over 400. And uh, in another case in South Georgia, I had a person whose glucose level was extremely high. Now, what if I'm doing a test and, and you say that your glucose score is 400? And I said, that's a great score. Or if I tell you your cholesterol level is really, really high, that's a great score. And then something happens to you and the family says, well, this church or these people said this was a great score. You see, there can be liability. Number one, we don't want something to happen to people. And so that's why we require and risk management requires health professionals on the interpretation of these things. So please note that. Now, what do we stress? Number one, we can't stress everything. Dr. Handysides, who just retired from the General Conference as health leader for many years, one time gave me a book that was about this thick. It had 90 one-hour lectures in their own health. And I used to carry that book around and show people, our leaders, 
You can't go 90 different directions. You would be better off choosing one direction and doing it well as trying to do 10 things and not doing it well. So I'm going to tell you one thing that, w- that we really stress, and then I'm going to kind of guide you through uh, some steps in, in how to make these things happen. One of the things that we stress is dealing with cardiovascular disease. Why? Because tests show that we can do something about that. We can do better than we're doing. Uh, so we approach it from a nutritional standpoint and from an exercise standpoint. Okay, from a nutritional standpoint, uh, I'm going to just show you a couple of modules <clears throat> that we have that can, can help you in this situation. Uh, this one shows, I want to turn it up and you can probably see it moving. Uh, the, carrying the, red, uh, the red blood cells are carrying oxygen going through the artery because it's nice and clean. This one, as you can see, is not moving too well. And um, why? Well, there's a buildup here and you can see this buildup. Yeah, there's a lot of controversy over that today, and a lot of people will tell you that cholesterol is not a big factor. Well, I can tell you the Framingham Heart Study, the largest heart study done in America, did not find one single heart attack if the cholesterol was under 150. So our goal in our churches is to, is to make sure people understand this, this, this situation. So again, you may bring in speakers from different, different places, and, and that's, of course, very good. In the, the other category has to do with exercise. Test after test after test, and I do not have time to go through that now. I would if this was a health rally that shows that the number one factor in heart disease, believe it or not, is fitness, physical fitness. The longitudinal study, for example, with 32,000 plus men and 6,000 plus women showed the number one factor was low fitness. And even... If a person smoked and exercised, they were better off than if we are not smoking, but we don't exercise. So we stress aerobic exercise. Um, A number of years ago in in the North American Division level, I said we should be leading the world in fitness. And from that came the In Step for Life program. Does it work as far as stressing this? Let me tell you exactly what's been happening. In this conference, for a number of years, we suggested that the church have an in-step coordinator. We don't require that anymore. But to give you an idea of how how it really uh, helps to stress this in your churches, uh, last year we had over 100,000 people. Over, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. We had, uh, we covered over 100,000 miles in this conference. The next nearest conference. 18,000 miles. So we stress in step for life. Uh, we can help you with charts uh, and all kinds of things. Um, there's, we have a, actually a sheet that we can send you that shows the variation, I mean, different types of activities, how they relate. For instance, how much gardening uh, uh, versus walking or running or riding bicycles or whatever. So anyway, you can get that information from us. Uh, I'll use myself as an example on this, folks. Um, and that is, I used to uh, have a, a, a um, heartbeat level of 72, which is average for men. But years ago, I started running. And so today that my uh, heart rate is between 52 and 60 as a resting heart rate. Uh, I'm sure my heart would, if it could speak, would say, thank you, EW, for uh, giving me more, more rest between beats. So yeah, you can, you can do better. We can all do better. Now, uh, we use a chart uh, to show you um, if we do a health rally at your church that actually shows you the recommended uh, level, uh, 85% of maximum to get your age by, I mean, your heart rate by age. Whatever you do in your churches, please notice, always suggest and require people, especially if they're over 40, that they get permission from a doctor. Because one of our churches conducted a fitness program a number of years ago and a person came in from the community and actually died before he left. So make sure, um, not only we sign waivers, but we don't want anybody dying. So make sure that they learn to start out slowly into this area. Another category very quickly is strength training. We have 63 major muscles in our body. Uh, It's critical that we keep these in great shape. 
uh, because the better shape the muscles are, the less effort and ex uh, 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 energy that it takes for you to move, even if you're walking, okay? Flexibility is the other one. That is, uh, we have tendons and ligaments uh, that have been designed by God to keep our muscles and work with our bones. And again, it's important that, these are, are, that you take care of these through a regular flexibility program. So that's something we definitely suggest. All right. With that in mind, and as a leader, uh, whether you're starting out in July or whether you're starting out in January, where are you going? Number one, we suggest that you have a long-range plan and a short-range plan. Long-range, what does your church plan to do over the next two to three years? You can't do everything all the time, as I said earlier. So what do you, what, where would you like to be two years from now or three years from now? as far as health or personal ministries are concerned. Um, in personal ministries, we call it seed sowing from a spiritual angle. Um, and we all know that you don't just throw seed out there and it pops up. It takes time. It needs nurturing. Uh, it needs all of the different elements of, of, and to grow, grow plants. So it's the same way with individuals. Short range, what do we plan to do this year? Now, there's four characteristics that I suggest uh, that I doubt any one person has all four. If so, that's great for you. But this is why we have a committee, because you might be great at planning, dreaming. But the second category is organize. You may not be as good at organizing, so you need somebody on your committee to help you. Or you might be great at organizing, but you need somebody to guide you on planning. So characteristic number one is to be able to plan. Number two, to organize. Number three, manage. For example, you've got a team, okay? You've got to be able to schedule the team. You've got to come together. You've got to, get, you've got to do your planning. You've got to realize, you know, what kind of budget do we have? Who are we serving in the community? Uh, all of these things, these are all factors, and you know, as well as I do, on committees, people are going to have different opinions. You do not need a team of yes people. We must have a checks and balance system. So don't be afraid to bring people on there who are strongly opinionated. Sometimes that can really get interesting, but uh, <laughs> you're better off with opinions than a team that has no idea or no thoughts. So my suggestion is, with your balance team, planning, somebody strong in organizing, but also in managing, managing the team, uh, managing the budget, managing the plans, and, and you'll be successful. Now, there's another category that we very seldom pay attention to, and that is evaluate what you're doing. I see this all the time where churches are doing the same thing that they've been doing for years, and it's like nothing's happening. Uh, so make sure that we, at the end of the year, evaluate what we did. You know, if you planned a lot of events and nobody came to any of them, I think I'd be looking at something else. Now, folks, when we're talking about planning, I've got to say this now. This is, has to do, it may be in the personal ministries area. Every church I go into, every, every training I have, I'm, I'm only there for a little while and I'm gone. Usually we only remember a few things and forget most of what, you know, people say. But there's two things that we must remember. Number one, God has called you to be in this position. You're not in this position by accident. And he, he who calls has promised to give us strength. We must stress in our individual lives uh, and, and to our committee, personal Bible study and prayer. Folks, we've got to do this also in our churches. I don't care how it's done with the pastor, head elders, I mean, elders, whatever. The study by Joseph Kidder, done among Seventh-day Adventists that attend church on a regular basis and reported in a book called The Big Four, and you can get it at the ABC, showed that our church members who attend on a regular basis, 37% are studying their Bible once a day, 43% once a week. How strong are you going to be if you eat once a week? 
and 20% or one out of five not studying at all. Folks, we're busy. Everybody's busy. But everybody also has 24 hours a day. Prayer. The study showed 73% of the people in our, going to our churches regularly said they pray at least once a day. That's, you know, that's 73%. 21% said they pray once a week. 6% not at all. So when I talk to you about focus, this spiritual focus has got to attend, I mean, it got to happen first. If you want some of the handouts that I give in, in, in training when I do it uh, regionally, uh, you can write, we'll send you a folder uh, with, with uh, the written material. Uh, I can tell you that one of the things we have was put together by uh, Jerry Four a few years ago, Dr. Four, who was our church ministry director at the time, and it's called Eight Steps to a Growing Church. And the number one thing that was suggested in there is revival in your church. Revival. You know, we're called Laodicea. That means we're sleepy or we're completely asleep. The more dangerous thing is being sleepy. But folks, this is why I'm saying we've got to challenge our people and ourselves and our committee to, pray, to study and pray. One of the things I focus on is what happened in the early church at Pentecost. We see in, in, in chapter 11, the book of Hebrews, ordinary people doing extraordinary things. What did I say? Ordinary people, people like you and me. But when God says, wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and He promised to do that to the disciples, and He will do it with us, then, then there will be no failure. But we can't run ahead of Him. So, what are we saying? Plan, yeah, but start with the spiritual preparation and then go through these steps of planning to what you want to do. Okay? We, we recognize that... Um, uh, that, that there's things you need and things that we want to be able to help you with. And uh, we have a lot of things at this conference office uh, that, that, are, that, are, that you can use. However, uh, some of these things, and I'm going to show you in just a moment, you do have to come and pick them up. We cannot mail these things. For example, the module I just showed you with cholesterol, uh, these kind of things we just cannot put through the mail. And so, uh, as I said, we can help you once you get organized and decided where you want to go. Uh, before we show you these things, let me again, though, remind you, if you plan to use any of the things that we have, and I'm talking about some of these uh, objects, you must plan ahead. Why do I say that? Well, let's just use health fairs for an example. Many of our churches and many of you plan a health fair in the fall of the year, which is a great idea. Um, at that health fair, one thing you can do is a health age appraisal. A health age appraisal is a computerized program, and it's kind of a fun thing. Uh, now, remember, when people come into the fair, if it's a county fair, they're coming for the county fair. They didn't know they was going to bump into somebody talking about health. But I've done this many times. Uh, I remember in Auburn, Georgia, uh, one year, we had, uh, uh, I had 250 people come by our booth in just a few hours. Um, and, and usually you have somebody that's kind of outgoing personality. And you remember, you got people passing by there and you say, hey, would you like to find out how old you really are? And people kind of say, oh, no, I'd be afraid to. Oh, come on. It's just a fun thing. And they just answer six questions. But those answers are fed into a computer. So if you're going to do the health age appraisal, uh, you can check out our computer and the printer. But guess what? I only have one of those each. So this is why you must schedule ahead. Uh, otherwise, you say, well, I think I can get this from the conference. I need it next week. And unfortunately for you, it's already scheduled with somebody else. OK, so this, again, has to do with important planning. Um, as you think about uh, uh, health screenings and things like that inside a building, uh, one of the most valuable things we have for you are, are the New Start posters. There's 16 of them. They cost $400 a piece. Um, 
you don't have to buy them because we've got them. However, you do have to come to the conference office to check them out. And my secretary, Becky, will show you how to lower them and pick them up because you're responsible for them if they tear up and you actually have to sign that you're responsible from the church. Um, and now I will tell you that uh, um, Dr. Cleveland now has put together a new uh, format for this where you can get, I believe, just eight of these instead of all 16 at a cheaper rate. So you can call my secretary if you're interested in that and purchasing that for your church. Uh, if you do a lot of health outreach programs, you might want to do that. Um, now, what I want to do is just mention a number of different type of health programs uh, right now. And, and if you're a personal ministries leader, you say, well, everything you're talking about is health. Well, remember we said that, <laughs> that health is the right arm of the message. And that's what Jesus did. And so it's a great way to meet people and build relationships. So I just want to mention some things. This one is critical. The most successful thing happening in our conference right now is a reversing diabetes program. Type 2 diabetes is the fastest growing health problem in this country. And um, a matter of fact, uh, by the year 2050, the World Health Council says that one out of three people will have type 2 diabetes. Right now, we have somewhere between 15 and 20 million diabetics, but we have, depending on what figures you see, somewhere between 67 and 84 million pre-diabetics. In this conference, Steve and Karen Wickham have put together a program called the Grundy Reversing Diabetes Program, named uh, really from Grundy County in Tennessee, where the program started. It is so successful that the CDC is actually looking at it as a possibility as the official program in the state of Tennessee. We've trained well over 300 people in our churches how to conduct this. Uh, just this last weekend in one of our communities, they had 98 people that attended on opening night. Folks, they go through one night a week for six weeks. If I had time to tell you, I could talk to you in detail. Oh, uh, so many people. One person lost over 200 pounds. People get, getting off of insulin and off of medication. This program works. Obviously, when you help people, then that word's going to spread to the people in their family and in the community. This is what Christ did. People found out this guy was healed, you know, and word spread everywhere. The guy's been crippled all his life. Look, he's been healed. So again, this program is one that we believe needs to be in every single church. Uh, already, we've done some training events this year. Uh, you need to just watch for training events in the future, whether it be on the conference or union level. And um, uh, again, you have to have health professionals involved. You as a health leader can organize the program. You can advertise the program. You can even show the DVD uh, of the program uh, with Steve and Karen Wickham. However, if, and um, let me back up. If you're doing it for yourself or your family, you know, that's all right. But if you're doing it as a church, then you're, we require again that a nurse or health professional be in that room to answer questions and do interpretation. I hope that's clear. You can show the video, but if you give any kind of counsel, give any kind of answers, I hope you understand how critical it is uh, that we don't just give our opinion. Sometimes we believe, well, I've read a lot in the spirit of prophecy and I know a lot of these things. I know what people need. I know what they need to eat. I know they need to be walking. I'm telling you that you can be liable. Your church can be liable and I and the denomination can be liable if we give information that is uh, that, that could be interpreted. Uh, remember, <laughs> interpreted as being harmful. So uh, at the same time, Folks, I, I can't emphasize enough that we need this program in every church. Another very successful program, uh, maybe not yet on a large scale, but certainly is Dinner with the Doctors. Um, and that is um, uh, some churches that have been very successful using a physician or a doctor uh, to, as far as the health message is concerned. Again, if you want information on that, you can contest and we can put you in touch with people that are already doing this. Uh, I mentioned health fairs. Another thing you can do, a health expo is different than a health fair. 
a health expo is where you are in the community showing different types of programs that are available. Uh, now, Wildwood is, uh, has been famous in, through the years for coming in and helping you with health expos. And uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, in a few minutes, I'm going to show you a, a variety of programs that are available from other people in, the, in, in this country. Uh, and uh, so I hope, though, that, that, uh, that you understand that there's a lot of directions to go. And what did I say earlier? You've got to narrow it down. To, to answering the, the, your community's needs and, and the ability that you have to do these things. Uh, for example, if you're going to do a fitness program in the community, it really needs to be a coach or a, a fitness a, a, a coach or trainer, somebody that's professional uh, on these things. And that's just an example of, of what we're talking about. Um, the idea of... Um, of drawing blood. Um, again, I'm fully aware that you can buy the little machine at the drugstore uh, that does cholesterol testing, but keep in mind again, our requirement um, that, that requires health professionals. Now, another uh, uh, program that you need to be aware of that can be very helpful for your church is a program called Be Well. Now, this program is designed to actually come into your church and do health testing, a blood lipid panel, if you would, for people in your church and your community. Uh, so if you're interested in doing this kind of testing in your church, uh, in which it does involve a lab and this type of thing, but they come in with the professionals to do it. All you've got to do is the advertising, and there is a little bit of expense uh, on paying their mileage to your church from, from where they're coming. And uh, if you're interested in that, again, you can ask, for us, ask us for information or we will put you in touch with the people who do the Be Well testing. They're the ones that do our testing for our pastors and teachers and uh, have been doing it for a long time. And I might add, we've had people find out they had uh, prostate cancer or they had other problems as a result of this testing. And uh, this is a tremendous way, again, to reach in to a community. Uh, okay, let's, um, let's now take a look at uh, some things I'm going to show you uh, from a health standpoint that, uh, that would be very helpful uh, for you to know about. These are resources, uh, and again, we can send you written information of how to contact any of these individuals, or if it's a magazine or book, whatever. Uh, and then I will go through uh, from a personal ministry standpoint. Uh, some things that we need to be, um, or some possibilities that you can do in your, in your church and of how we can help you, okay? So at this point, we're going to switch over to um, showing you uh, actual examples of what you can use. We're going to start with modules that are available for you to check out and use at health fairs, cooking classes, um, educational classes, maybe dealing with uh, cancer, uh, cooking classes, um, one class uh, or one church had a, a program dealing with um, health testing, uh, tasting. And uh, so any of those programs, these things can be valuable. This module I'm holding has to do with hidden sugars. The American Diabetes Association recommends no more than six teaspoons or 25 grams of sugar a day for ages 6 to 18. Now, six teaspoons is not very much, folks. I've got a granddaughter that has learned to read the labels and she was eating something and I said, how many teaspoons are in that? And she said, six. I said, well, then that's all the sugar you have today. Uh, it's not an accident that we have so much diabetic problems in this country. This module shows the amount of sugar in uh, different types of foods and it really gets their attention. I mean, when you see, uh, for instance, sweetened applesauce, with maybe 10 grams of sugar. This person says, what? Or if you see some, some cake here where there's 10, teaspo or 10, yeah, 10 teaspoons of sugar and it's already over the limit, uh, then you may see, or it'll get their attention, okay? Next category, uh, another module, is one dealing with hidden fats. 
Now I showed you a moment ago the, the cholesterol uh, machine uh, or, or module, but this one uh, has to do with hidden fats. Triglycerides are fats that are in our blood. It's recommended, uh, measured in milligrams, it'd be 150 or less. Uh, we actually have, and I'll show you one at the same time I'm holding this, this little it looks simple, but it shows 150 in one side and 450 in the other. It doesn't look like much, but it will get their attention to how much fat can be in different types of situations. And again, it is recommended, depending on the, your body somatotype, that is the size of your body, that you would have uh, no more than 15 grams of saturated fat a day and between uh, usually 44 and about 64 grams of unsaturated fat a day. The average American is getting three times the amount of fat that they should be getting. Uh, on cholesterol, Americans are getting way above what they should in protein, which is usually in the form of meat. And so uh, we're trying to get people's attention. If you're getting three times the amount of fat a day, why? Well, this shows you things like, well, for example, a regular hamburger and a medium order of fries will total 40 grams of fat in those two things. Then you think about an egg and cheese biscuit um, uh, or, or other types of foods that are just loaded in fat, and you'll see why we're getting 150 grams instead of the recommended amount. So these are modules you can check out and are very, very useful. Um, speaking of fat, this gets people's attention because it's five pounds of fat, okay? I've already shown you this one. Uh, and let me say something about these modules for a moment. The Seventh-day Adventist program that used to uh, sell these things no longer does that. Uh, so this book may show you, um, it's a science book, and there's another one called Education Edco, uh, or Health, Health Edco, I'm sorry. Uh, and these you can get a lot of modules from. And uh, so if you're interested in these books to buy something for yourself, then you can contact us. Some of the other modules I'm holding right here is the amount of tar uh, that the average teenagers are smoking in this country a day. This gets people's attention, okay? Right in front of me is a little module that uh, you can use, uh, which is very simple, uh, regarding your percentage of body fat. And um, we have uh, graphs that you can use for people if you're doing this again at a county fair or health fair or whatever, uh, showing the people what the percentage of body fat should be by different age groups and um, this is just a simple little thing that you hold up and it's operated off of batteries. And again, uh, you can do this, but uh, when you start talking about uh, fat, be careful and don't get over the line there and give information as if you're a health professional. Um, we also have, uh, I don't have any to show you here, but uh, a simple little gadget in which people just take a quick breath and breathe into it with a just a a burst of energy or a burst of air and it will give the score for the vital capacity of their lungs and uh, I can tell you that uh, if you exercise a lot your scores are going to be really high for example the average uh, women scores uh, in the pulmonary rate is, is around 275 men's is a little bit more like 325 a person uh, such as myself that exercises that score may be five six seven eight hundred uh, again, because it, your lungs are going to be much better for breathing uh, when you do a cardiovascular or aerobic exercise, okay? Okay, um, these are just some samples. Uh, I did mention the, uh, the poster, the large posters. We do not have those obviously here uh, that, you, that you can use. Uh, I'm going to move over here and show you uh, another example. This is a large... Um, backdrop that fits nicely on tables, and um, this was on exercise, designed for exercise, okay? I'm going to hold up some posters uh, that, are very that are very valuable for you to use 
uh, in your different uh, programs. This is the one I referred to earlier, and I don't know if we can see this on the, get it because it's kind of hard to hold up. This is the one that shows what is the recommended 85% of maximum level for your pulse rate when you're training. And this is really, really valuable because uh, like I said, if you're just starting out, you don't want your uh, heart rate at a maximum level. You want it at a 85% and a safe level. I will tell you that the governing factor on that is, is actually uh, your breathing. Uh, obviously, if you're trying to build up your fitness level, you want to be able to get your heart rate up, which means you'll breathe a little bit more, but you do not want to be gasping for air. So if you're breathing way too hard, then you're going too fast or too hard. I'm going to show you another poster, which uh, is really gets a lot of attention. And this one is in the area of diet and uh, has to do with fat comparison to some different types of food. Uh, for example, nearest my hand right here is a chocolate chip versus five pounds of grapes. In other words, you could eat five pounds of grapes equal that little bit of fat that's in that chocolate chip. This really gets people's attention. I don't have time to go through all of this. But again, this is something that if you're interested, uh, you can check out or you may even want to order uh, for, you know, in something that you might be doing. The last one has to do, and this again uh, gets kids' attention, uh, has, the, has to do with sugar and, and fat in, uh, in soft drinks. And uh, I don't have time to go through it, but you can compare a lot of the different types of uh, things out there that people drink, okay? All right. What we're going to do at this point is go through and show you uh, other things that are available from different companies, from individuals, different types of magazines, and, and things in the health arena, okay? Uh, we'll just start right here where I am. On this end, uh, you'll see the, uh, this is a uh, box containing DVDs, CDs, and a manual uh, called Simple Solutions. This is just the book. This is from Vicki Griffin. She's uh, uh, with Lifestyle Matters and Simple Solutions with the Michigan Conference. And uh, if you're interested in this, again, uh, we can give you, as I said, if you ask for the... Um, handouts that we normally give that will give you information of how to order any of these things, okay? And I'm simply going to go down through here uh, and, and, and just show you some things that are available uh, as far as programs are concerned. Uh, the next one uh, you may have heard of is by Creation, entitled Creation Health. Uh, Lionel Mountain at the Union Office uh, is, a, is an expert on this, and uh, if you're interested in Creation Health, then uh, you can contact him at the union office, or if you need to get his number, you can call us. Uh, a number of our churches do the creation program. I will tell you that my responsibility as health director for this conference is to let you know about all the programs that are available and, uh, and, and you know, best I can to give you information on those, all right? Um, the program, uh, this program is called um, Lifestyle or Losing Weight Management. And uh, this, along with a number of other programs, is with Don Hall, Long Life Health. Uh, he's in the northwest part of the United States, but uh, I've had Don Hall many times at uh, camp meeting. Uh, they have tremendous variety of things. Matter of fact, they have more health videos, DVDs, CDs, all kind of things, books on health, probably than, than all, most of the others even combined. Uh, but I will say that the first two I showed you, uh, Lifestyle Matters or Creation Health is, they all have combination of DVDs uh, and written materials. And so again, you just have to you know, get information to see which ones you like. On Don Hall's program, one of the ones that has been most successful in this conference has been one called Eight Weeks to Wellness. The first time I did a training in this conference to do Eight Weeks to Wellness, we had 125 people come. And um, it goes one out a week for eight weeks. 
and in using you know, basically the New START acronym or the Eight Laws of Health acronym. Um, eight Weeks to Wellness, another tremendous program from, from Don Hall. Um, another program, and I don't think I have uh, anything right here, is Win Wellness. Uh, Dr. Youngbird, and who does tremendous job. Uh, and again, if you're interested in that program, you can contact us. I do know that some churches in our conference have used uh, his program uh, a, a lot. Um, also, Angie, Dr. Angie David, the North American Division uh, health leader, will also come into usually our conference. If she comes, it's probably going to be a conference sponsored, but in some cases of a larger church, you might be able to schedule, to schedule her. Okay, um, uh, Wildwood, again, is, a, is an organization that is, is there that can help you, and they're in our conference, uh, and they will come to your church. They'll do a weekend program. They'll help you with health fairs and those kinds of things. Uh, also, um, UG Pines uh, has some services, so you might be willing to, uh, might be interested in information from them. Okay. Well, what I want to do now is uh, I'm going to go through and just show you books and magazines that may come from any of these organizations uh, that you can use in connection with uh, your health fair or health, health outreach. And in a few minutes, I'm going to show you in regards to personal ministries how you can do this program uh, with using these books or magazines. OK, so, so for right now, let's just start on this end. Uh, this is for Hans Deal's book entitled uh, Health, uh, Health Power. Um, this book is really uh, used by a lot of you uh, called The Full Plate Diet. This book is definitely used even by the Reversing Diabetes Program by Stephen Karen Wickham. Uh, so again, this is a very um, useful, useful book. Um, here I have a manual that is uh, designed with all kinds of suggestions for health leaders put together by Dr. Garver, uh, who just retired at Southern uh, University. And so this is something that is available. And if you're interested, I can tell you how you would purchase that. Um, across here, we're going to just look. I've already showed you the magazines uh, that you might be able to or want to order some of these things from. Um, I do need to talk about this one just a moment. <clears throat> A number of years ago in our conference, well, I mean, North American Division, we had a program called Regeneration. And uh, the, the director of that program was a great guy. He had been a, early in his life, he had been a, an addict in a lot of different ways. And so he put together this program as he became a Seventh-day Adventist minister. We had him many times in our conference. It was sponsored of the North American Division, but they didn't really give him much help. So, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago, on the NAD committee, I said, you know, we either need to upgrade regeneration or do away with it. Well, eventually, that led to what is called ARMIN, Adventist Recovery Ministry. Adventist Recovery Ministry. This deals with addictions. We're all aware of AA. Well, this has to do with how to put together support groups in your church. Now, I'm holding a manual which has different kinds of books that are available from an educational standpoint. If you're interested, and I know some churches are in our conference, I would recommend that you contact me and let you, me put you in contact with the North American Division so they can send someone um, to train you individually in your church or possibly, now I want you to make sure you go hear what I'm going to say here. Uh, later this year, uh, the training for our Adventist Recovery Ministry is coming from the North American Division. And uh, I'm going to have to say the date on this because I don't, I'm not giving you the exact date, but I'm giving you the year because it's 2017 will be the only year we will get them for probably the next three years. The state of Tennessee has contacted one of our pastors about uh, support groups in churches. Uh, he is in a program in which he's responsible for 10 counties in Tennessee, some of which are in our conference, some that are not. 
but the state of Tennessee says the programs that people are doing out there aren't working, and they want to see if churches have programs. Well, we do have a program. But again, this is a very good program. I know you have some people that would love to be involved as a support group for people in the community on getting off of addictions of all different types, okay? Uh, I will say that Vicki Griffin has a program uh, that is also uh, that's possible in this, but I, re I do recommend the Adventist Recovery Ministry because that's why it's been put together, okay? A program that also I really would like to see in every church and I probably, I don't know if they can focus on this with a camera or not, but it says, Let's Move Day. Uh, this is designed uh, to, to bring fo a focus on fitness for kids. Uh, I'm a former physical education teacher. I know the importance that kids should be having f uh, uh, regular physical education programs every day, not just recess, because at recess, kids that are fit are going to run and play, the ones that don't, that won't. Uh, this is something that is a great way to meet people in the community. It's a fun day. It's usually in the fall of the year, usually scheduled some two or three hours on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, it's just a series of fun things that kids can do. If I'm there with your church and Let's Move Day, I normally do 10 events, some of which are off the national physical fitness test, sit-ups, push-ups, sometimes and we give the kids 30 seconds to see how many they can do. And sometimes the parents want to see if they can beat their kids. And if they do five of the ten, then they're, they get a ticket that goes toward drawings for different kinds of things. If you do a Let's Move Day, schedule it way in advance. Uh, schedule it, um, it can be at your church. It could be at a local uh, uh, um, play near, a place near a, um, a greenway or, a, or an athletic field. Um, either way, uh, keep this in mind. I would offer different kinds of uh, of drawing, uh, drawings for prizes. Walmart gives money, has money set aside each month for people to come and, and, and ask, but you have to ask. And they start over at the first of each month. Uh, in one case, we got four bicycles and a basketball goal. So keep that in mind. And I would contact other people in the community because it's not just you doing it. I would invite people in the community to do things like a karate program, a roller skating, any type of activity that can get kids moving. Uh, in mine, I do other things like um, a jump rope, a hula hoop, uh, throwing objects, running, and all kinds of things. So a Let's Move Day is something I suggest in every church. Now, folks, remember this. And personal ministers, leaders, if you do these kinds of things and meet Kids, you're going to meet parents, okay? All right. Vicki Griffin produces what's called Balance Magazine. The one I'm holding is one dealing with the entertainment trap, also an article on diabetes. And um, there's a number of magazines in by Balance. This one is on the metabolic syndrome and is also a very, very good one. Um, <clears throat> the one that I'm holding right here uh, that you can get from the ABC is called <clears throat> Amazing Health Facts. This shows some of the latest research. It's one of the best general magazines that you can get. I use it uh, a lot because it does focus on all health, all eight health factors, okay? Uh, for example, it'll show you in here that we're not drinking enough water in this country. 75% of Americans are dehydrated at any one point, 37% are hungry so they eat more. It makes the situation worse. That research is actually reported in here. Uh, I mentioned Don Hall earlier. Uh, Don Hall, this is his little book on reversing diabetes. And uh, again, it's a very, very uh, helpful book or magazine. Now keep in mind that all these magazines you can purchase and have them there to give to people, uh, whether you're doing a testing or health educational program or whatever you might be doing. Um, another source is uh, the Health and Healing from Wildwood, and this one is on cancer. The one they have on reversing diabetes is one of the best I've seen. It's a little magazine, and uh, they're very colorful, and this is something, again, that you can, uh, we can give you uh, to order. Um, 
I believe, uh, let's see here, this is from Hans Deal, and this is Dynamic Living, uh, and this is Hans Deal's program. Uh, I have not mentioned the CHIP program. Obviously, the CHIP program is one of the best programs out there you can do in your church. However, it does require health professionals uh, because there's a blood draw involved. Uh, there needs to be physicians involved. So if your church has these kind of people, uh, and it's a little more expensive to operate, uh, but it can be very valuable. So again, CHIP is an organization uh, that you could, might be interested in. Uh, I would like to back up just a moment because if you do um, um, advertising such as um, um, for some of the programs such as the um, program we talked about, Let's Move, um, the, the conference will do some printing, uh, especially if we're involved from the conference office uh, as far as flyers and things like that are concerned, Okay. Um, I believe the last thing I want to show you would be, uh, again, the advertisement uh, uh, dealing with diabetes. This particular one, though, is on a New Start program. It's a video also that is available. Um, I, will, I want to close on health as far as the Grundy program is concerned. They now have the six DVDs as well as for how to conduct the program. And these are for sale, and the total is $100. Now, it may sound like a lot, but almost any of these programs are going to be similar in price, some more expensive than others. But I can tell you that um, if, if your church is interested in doing the reversing diabetes program and you do not have a people who want a speaker, for example, to present it, uh, then you can use the videos then contact us and I'll tell you how you can, can get the program. Now, we are getting ready to start doing a lot more advertising for Steve and Karen to come into your churches to do weekend programs. At this point, I'm not in a position to let you know that that's available, but soon it will be. And when, it's, when that is happening, I will let you know when you can schedule them uh, through our office or through, by, through them, I should say, to come to your church to explain how to do the program. I'll use an example of what happened. We did this in Douglas, Georgia, with our little church there. And uh, I believe we had maybe, I don't know, just for Friday night and Sabbath, I believe it was something like uh, 15, 20 people that came. And they see the interest, and then you can schedule the, the uh, uh, one night a week for six week program, okay? All right, we're gonna switch over now to personal ministries. Everything I've said just about here has had to do with, with health as outreach. Personal ministries, I've already though given you advice as far as your committee is concerned. Same advice that I gave earlier, remember to plan, organize, manage, and evaluate. Uh, have the committee, uh, and, and in, your commi in your category, I've already given suggestions. So what I'm gonna do now is focus on some things that you can do or need to do in your church. Uh, one, I've already stated, and I will restate, that the little book, Eight Steps to a Growing Church, might be something you would want to look at because it's got eight steps as far as personal ministries are concerned, and one of those is the revival. I mentioned that earlier, okay? I'm going to begin by just showing you, first of all, this manual, which is available for you as a leader from the North American Division uh, on, on becoming a personal ministry's director if you are for the first time. It's just, it's got suggestions, some of which things I've been, I've, I've been talking about, okay? There's also one on prison ministries uh, also. And, and before I leave that, if you don't have prison ministries, please consider doing it. If you need me to come or talk to you about prison ministries in your church. Folks, we have over 120 people in this conference going into prisons. I go in on a quarterly basis, twice uh, a quarter into a prison and doing some health programs. And we have many people being baptized. I baptized somebody in a prison just a few weeks ago. They've got 12 more that are waiting to be baptized, but there's a little conflict there with the, with the uh, chaplain, and soon I think that'll be worked out. Okay? All right. Uh, I'm going to start because I know that uh, one of the things we talk about in our churches is 
a Bible study program. Now, we've heard of some of those that are really successful. Discover is the one we hear the most about because it's been advertised on a large division level and worldwide level. Another very successful Bible study program is the new one by It Is Written. Pastors, I think, know about that, so you can ask your pastors. Um, it's a very, very good program. The one I want to talk to you about, though, is the conference program called Bible Research. We started this program 24 years ago. I'm holding a simple little copy here, which may not look much. It's kind of plain looking. Um, and um, it's just simply filling the missing words of Bible text. King James Version, which is huge here in the South. Now, we do zip code mail outs because I'm responsible for areas where we don't have churches, like Pioneer Outreach areas is what we call them now. It used to be called Dark Counties. And um, folks, right now, 55% of the people who finish this little simple lesson, and there's only um, six sheets because there's two, there's, a, there's a, a lesson on each side, real simple, a total of 12. 55% of the people finish this. If you give this lesson to somebody, all they got to do is put a stamp on there and mail it back in to us. When that happens, we, of course, send back the next lessons. Uh, we also will send them a sheet that advertises 31 at the moment and soon to be 34 videos that I have on the Internet. The first 10 have to do with the, fun it's, it's entitled the Fundamental Series, dealing with our major doctrines. Then there's a prophecy series, then there's a health series, and now there's an end time series. Folks, things that are happening in the world right now ought to be getting our attention. If not, we must be fully asleep. And uh, uh, we offer these Bible students, uh, they can ask for any of these free, uh, DVDs or CDs, it's the same message. Or you can go on the internet. Now we have two different websites on the internet, and I have two little cards that are different. This one on the top is called Bible Research. The one at the bottom is called Bible Study Topics Guide dot, dot com. Uh, if you go on the Bible Research dot info on the internet, either one of those on the internet, you can watch these DVDs. Uh, they're designed for the Holy Spirit to impress people that are looking for truth. When they watch these, or when they go to the, either one of these websites. They can ask for free, free uh, lessons, written lessons, or as I said, they can watch them right on the Internet, or they can ask for DVDs and CDs, okay? So why do I tell you this? Because, folks, I have, I mean, this is a simple way, personal ministry leaders, for everybody in your church to be passing out these cards. I mean, you can give them to friends and relatives. You can, you can give it to people that you bump into anywhere, I've got, I get calls all the time. I've had them this week where, where people say, I found your card uh, on a bulletin board at a grocery store. I found it on a bulletin board at a fitness center. This week I got a call from South Georgia. A lady said, I just got your card somebody gave to me. Another lady says, I found it at work. It was on my desk when I came back. Every, when I go into motels and hotels, I give it to people. I give it to people all over the place, even in restaurants. Why? Because the Holy Spirit can impress people. It's a tremendous way to witness, and it's easy. All you've got to do is call me. I will send you as many of these cards as you want. There's 250 cards in a box. One lady in this conference, believe it or not, has passed out over 20 boxes. She's now finishing 24 boxes. And there's, you just don't know, folks. I've got to tell you. It's a simple way to witness. I've got to tell you a quick story. This was near College Dale in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I got a letter one day from a young lady. She said, uh, I just want you to know, I have just finished your Bible research lessons. She said, I have become a Seventh-day Adventist. She said, you may not know, or even know that I was taking the lessons because I don't personally grade the lessons. Uh, she said, I came home from work one day. I was very tired. Um, I had two kids. I'm divorced. And she said, I found this lesson on the front door. She said, I was tired. So she said, I just threw it aside. Months went by. She said, I don't know how much longer it was. She said, I was cleaning. And she said, I found this lesson. I sent it in. Started taking lessons. And today I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. 
I probably would never have known that. You may not know who may become a Seventh-day Adventist. We don't even know who left that on her door. And whoever it did may not know until they get to heaven. A simple way, uh, folks, to, to, to get the message out there. Now, we will send you a list of Bible students in your area that finish Bible research, personal ministries leaders. It will have on their lessons they've taken, uh, DVDs and CDs they've asked for. And when they finish Bible research, they go to Prophecy of Hope. Prophecy of Hope is a very simple lesson, but it's 26 lessons filling, it, uh, uh, filling in missing words of Bible text. It covers all of the major doctrines. I believe this was put together by Gary Gibbs. And folks, the people who take these lessons, and plus the DVDs and CDs, are exposed to the doctrines. I could literally tell you experiences all day long. I mean, I got one uh, just a couple of weeks ago in which a lady said, okay, if Saturday's the Sabbath, why am I going to church on Sunday? Well, that's a good question. And I was able to write back and uh, give her some answers and, of course, send her some literature. Uh, I mean, just on and on and on these types of, of things. Um, now, in the past, we've had five sets uh, from Prophecy of Hope. We've gone to Amazing Facts, then Discover, and then Focus on Prophecy. We have cut back right now to ending at the end of Prophecy of Hope unless they ask, well, have you got more lessons? And, and the reason for this is that some people do just like to do lessons. But uh, we're wanting to, to find out who are really interested. And um, this is, so keep this in mind that if you're interested in Bible research, uh, then just call me and I'll send you whatever you want and talk to you about it, okay? Uh, before I look at other resources here, um, let me, let me um, talk to you about a couple of other things that, that I believe we need to be doing in all of our churches. Um, one, I, I personally believe that we need to be able to focus in our church, and you may have already done this, but make sure that the church has done it recently, on former members, people who were Seventh-day Adventists at some point in their life that are living in your community, okay? Um, and, um, you know, maybe they've been impressed, but nobody's visiting. But I think we need to go and knock on their door and say, you know, we're here from the local Seventh-day Adventist church. Um, I just wanted to come. I know you used to be a church member and we've missed you. The Lord misses you and he wants you to come back. Second category is missing members. Missing members may be people whose names are on the books. Uh, former members would be people probably not, but somebody in your church might know they're in the community or whatever. And you've come across them in, in outreach or whatever. Missing members would be people that's not been there for a while. And again, I would go and I just, you know, and by the way, when you do this, this section actually comes under visitation committee. I think you need a visitation committee. Uh, make sure you have a balance of male and female. Don't send two males to visit a female if it's a Bible study interest. Uh, and, and by the way, let me back up a minute on a Bible study interest. Don't just call. Go knock on the door, you know, and, and when you go, you can, uh, you know, take something with you. Uh, Matter of fact, let me just show you. I said I wasn't going to do this, but let me just show you this one. Uh, this is excerpts from Desire of Ages called The Passion of Love. Folks, we send this when we send the first lesson of Bible research. Okay? I can tell you that it is so great that people are always commenting on how great the book is. Could I have 25 of these to pass out in, in, in Sunday school class? And these kinds of things. But if you're visiting a former member or a missing member, take something like this, okay? Uh, and let the Holy Spirit guide them and direct them. I know I just recently have visited a, a person that I know was a, as a young person was in our church. And uh, so the, uh, since we knew her, we went to visit her and uh, invited her back to church and, um, and, and continued to call and, and pray with her. Uh, so anyway, this, the, the, the idea of missing former members there's another category as personal ministries leader, I think we ought to be responsible for. And this is with your deacons and deaconesses that are on your committee. Make sure 
but we probably are doing this, but let's not miss anybody that's in the elderly category that maybe needs help going to the grocery store, being checked upon regularly. I don't mean once a month. I mean every week or so, just whatever it needs to be. Check on these people, okay? There's another category that uh, kind of bothers me. Um, it's called dealing with kids or single parents. In the world, we have big brothers and big sisters. In the Seventh-day Adventist Church, we do not have an organization. But folks, there are males out there who have daughters that need a female influence. Uh, there are females with boys that need a male influence. Uh, as personal ministers director, uh, I would ask you to make sure we don't miss anything like this uh, because um, uh, th this would be critical. Uh, keeping in mind that anytime we're dealing with kids like this, we're talking about a background check and, and so forth. But I can tell you of a situation where a girl became a Seventh-day Adventist through our Bible research program. She had two kids, a girl and a boy. Uh, growing up, she had been abused by her father, physically abused, broken bones. Principal picked up on it, but the father was close friends with a, with a sheriff, and so nothing happened. Um, later, she was raped, and that's how she had, the, I believe, the boy. Um, she later dated uh, a guy she thought she was going to marry, but it turned out he was already married, so she did not trust anybody. So I called the church, and I said, you know, she really needs both female and male in her to help from the church. And as a result of that, they did start going. And I mean, because she wouldn't go anywhere without the kids. She wouldn't go shopping without them. She wouldn't go anywhere. And so the, the, the church started uh, giving her, you want to say, a free day by having a program where they brought the kids in to play with other kids. So this is something we need to be really aware of. Okay. Um, Something else that you need to make note of, and that is that we sponsor once a year a Share Him program, which is usually the first week in November every year. Uh, but you need to, to be aware of this. Share Him trains laymen to be speakers in holding evangelism meetings. And it was designed for an easy way for you to do it, and that is that you would start out in other countries where you'd have a translator. I've done this in other countries, and so I, I understand the program. Um, uh, so if you have any laymen in your church that are interested, and I'm sure you will have. We've had as many as 80, 90 people trained on these sometimes, and it's almost always uh, 40 or 50 or more uh, each year that are trained to, to how to become a lay evangelist. And so I would ask you to be aware of that program. Okay, um, I want to show you now some of the resources. We don't have the same kind of resources in personal ministries that we do in health because they simply aren't out there. I will tell you this, and I've already mentioned it earlier. Make sure that you go to the festivalofleity.com. See what all's out there. They're putting my videos on there. But recently in a meeting, uh, someone from Oklahoma had mentioned that they have a new Bible study program, and I don't think it's on there yet, but it's designed not only to come back to you as far as um, um, if, you, if you do their program, anybody in your area, but it will actually give you information of how to contact the people, and it gives you regular information rather than just when they finish. It kind of keeps you up to date as they go. I'm not sure even of the name of that program, but uh, if you're interested, uh, you can get that off the Festival of the Laity. Another very successful Bible study program is called, and I know a number of you have done this, uh, Footsteps to Jesus. Um, I want to show you, though, a magazine right now that I really believe that you it's just out recently called The Day of the Lord. This is, an, is it can be purchased at the ABC. Um, and it's very colorful, all kind of information dealing with the second coming of Jesus. Signs Company, the Signs of the Times, uh, uh, has a number of magazines you can get from the ABC. I want to focus on this one just for a moment. This is one that I believe needs to be in every church uh, if there's kids. Uh, and, and it's dealing with spiritualism. Now, I have two DVDs dealing or CDs dealing with this subject. 
But this magazine is very, very good. I think most of us are aware of the Harry Potter program that's just sweeping the globe. And folks, uh, I don't know, I, I, years ago I did research on subliminal messages. If you go on the internet, some of the things you will see regarding ads aren't even subliminal. They're just out and out bad. But um, think of the video games and the TV programs that kids are watching that probably have all kinds of subliminal messages. What I did, I went uh, to Deuteronomy chapter 18 in the Bible and looked at the um, things that God was forbidding His people to be involved with. Deuteronomy chapter 18. One of those is magic and one of those is witchcraft. Today, witchcraft in the form of Wicca is a, recognized as a religion by the Supreme Court and the, um, um, what is it, Social, Social Security Department? No, that's not right. I know it's recognized by the Supreme Court. And folks, in every, every one of our churches, we've got kids. And we see nothing wrong with all these things. Well, we are reminded, if you recall, in great controversy, that the threefold union that would take place at the end of time, one of those is spiritualism. And Satan, using spiritualistic forces, is at work. And I suggest this magazine that you could order it for every church. This one is called uh, Spiritualism and the Occult. So again, uh, this is something you can order from the ABC. Okay? Another new one from the ABC that you may or may not be, uh, know about is called the rest, of your, the rest of Your Life. And of course, this is talking about the Sabbath. As you can see, this is a very good magazine from the ABC. Okay? Um, on, the, on the signs, there are a lot of other magazines. I kind of went over that maybe a little faster. I, I have another one. This was entitled um, uh, The Surprising Truth About Hell. Uh, this is another one you get from the ABC. They have them on the Second Coming, the State of the Dead, and a lot of other a lot of other subjects. Okay, this little this little book is one that is very valuable, mainly for young people, but a lot of adults um, want it. Everywhere I go, it's called Follow, and uh, it's just simply written. Uh, and uh, the the guy that wrote this works in the field of youth. Uh, uh, he was the youth pastor there at College Dale at Southern for many years. And uh, this is another little book that, that if you're interested, you need to call me on this because you cannot get this one uh, through the ABC. Uh, each year they come out with different books, um, uh, the NAD, and you'll just have to check the ABC as far as which books are available uh, for, uh, for this year, okay, as the, as the mission book. Um, we have... Uh, we have some of these. Uh, this one is called, this is Steps to Christ, but it's called Let's Win. I generally give these books out at the, um, uh, at the um, Let's Move days. And uh, it's got sports figures on there, and this is designed to get attention with, from young people. Okay? Um, this book is one of the, it's actually going out of print, but I still have some that I might could get to you. It's called The Ten Commandments. Not Ten Commandments Twice Removed. This one was Lauren Wade uh, through the ABC uh, is, um, deals with all Ten Commandments, not just the Sabbath. Uh, most people out there who worship on Sunday believe in the Ten Commandments. Not all, but most do. And uh, I have, I've had people ask if they could get a large number of these to pass out in their Sunday school class. And uh, so, again, if you have questions, this is something that's very, very valuable. Um, this one uh, is called uh, Victory in Christ, written back, I think, in the 1940s. They've reprinted them at the Review and Herald. And uh, you can get these through the ABC. Now, keep in mind <laughs> that there are a lot of other things at the ABC other than the things I've shown you. I've just given you some samples uh, I know that some of you do not live near a, an, an ABC. Um, let me mention a couple of other things that we do. Uh, we, one thing I'm responsible for is called Three Point Play Ministry. Uh, this is where we do sports camps, basketball camp, volleyball camp, soccer camp, uh, in which we, um, I'm a former coach, and so 
we don't play games, but it's all designed to um, uh, meet kids, teach them the basic fundamentals of the sport. But then each day in our devotion, we um, talk about Jesus. Now, I'm going to work my way slowly over here. I don't want to mess him up on the camera, but I do want to show you one of the posters uh, because we have a lot of different posters that are available from the ABC, and you might want to use some of these in connection with programs that you're doing at your church. Okay, now I'm going to show you just two. Uh, this first one uh, says, um, well, I guess I got it upside down. It would help if I turned it over. Live well, laugh often, love much. And it has a Bible text here. Uh, there's a large variety of these posters. Uh, the next one I show you, I, I, I use regularly in a three-point play ministry. It said, God is with you through thick and thin. Now, this dog isn't looking too comfortable on these scales because dogs aren't made to be there. Um, at, at our basketball camp, I stress on the first day setting goals to where you're going. And I actually use a picture of a sea turtle that's on land laying its eggs and, of course, has to get back in the water or it will die, uh, to, to set goals properly and of how God wants to guide us. Uh, I use this one because we recognize that in setting goals, sometimes there's difficulties, things that cause us problems. Um, one of the posters I use shows a dog and a cat tangled up in a net. I use that on the second day. Uh, because uh, of how kids get mixed up with things that entangle their lives, such as drugs, steroids, alcohol, tobacco. They've all heard about steroids. And, um, so, but I'm showing you these because these posters you can get for any kind of programs with pathfinders, uh, adventurers, or any kind of programs you do in your church. I want to make sure you're aware. And, the, and then the Bible texts are very critical. I was in one community where we don't have a church, and at the end of the camp, the mother said, do you mind if I tell you what my daughter thought about your camp? And I said, well, no, that's what, what did she have to say? She said the thing she liked most, most was that you talked about Jesus. And folks, that's what it's all about. Everything that we're talking about here today is all about Jesus. If we don't love Jesus, where are we? What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? The purpose for your church is to be a witness, a lighthouse in the community. And whatever we talk about needs to be pointing people to Jesus, using the health programs, using other types of outreach. You know, I have another video uh, that you can watch on our website in, in, in called Visitation Workshop, Do's and Don'ts of How to Visit. Um, we could talk about a lot of other things, but I've tried today to summarize what you need to basically be organized for success. You know, some people say if you don't organize for success, you're, you're, you are being organized to fail. And, uh, and so we're, we're here to present the gospel to people. And, and I, I just stress the importance of prayer and fasting and study. And if there's anything we can do to help you, um, I'll come to your church when I can. Uh, this year, our schedules fell up very well. The schedule's full. I'll tell you this, that if you want me to come to your church uh, in, in a following year, you need to contact me early. Some people are already scheduling me now for next year. And uh, I would love to come to your church if I've never been there. Uh, feel free to call us. Uh, I will talk to you over the phone and we will pray with you and for you. And so I'm going to close by having prayer here. And, uh, uh, and, and as I said, if you're interested in any written material from us, call my secretary. I gave you the number earlier. And we will mail you uh, resource information of how to order these things. Okay? Remember, God has called you to be successful. He doesn't call people to fail. He promised, He's got the same promise for you that He gave to the disciples. Wait. Don't run ahead. Wait for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, there will be no failure. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for each person here in each church. 
uh, whether they're a director or if they're an assistant or they're a committee member or whatever. Uh, they may be just watching this for ideas. Lord, I would ask that you would impress them through the Holy Spirit to what they can do, what you want them to do with their gifts and talents in their church. Guide them and direct them. Lord, we're living in serious times. We want you to come soon. And we are claiming the promise of the Holy Spirit. So bless each church, each person, each pastor, and we give you all the honor and glory. And we pray in your name, the name of Jesus. Amen.